about to catch a train from Birmingham to London. I'm actually quite looking forward to the time to read a book or even do a little bit of work. But if the high-speed rail service comes in, then more than half an hour will be cut from my journey. It's going to cost an absolute fortune, but supporters say it will deliver huge benefits to the economy. Even at current speeds, long-distance train travel has become increasingly popular in Britain and the trains are getting more crowded. Building extra capacity is part of the case for HS2, the high-speed rail project. Long-distance rail trips almost doubled in the period from 1995 to 2008. Domestic air travel grew rapidly too, but dipped quite sharply in recent years, while the number of long car journeys has hardly grown at all. Just about everyone thinks the rail network needs extra legroom, but there's violent disagreement on whether HS2 is the answer. It doesn't stack up economically, environmentally, even technically. It can't operate the way that they've said it should operate. We need to have the confidence to develop the best technology available and to make sure that we're connecting our cities properly and narrowing the north-south divide. A man and a tree. A train and a man. A big part of the economic case for high-speed rail depends on the idea of saving people time. The assumption is that valuable people are spending lots of valuable minutes doing absolutely nothing when they could be working. But does that really hold up anymore? On any train these days, and not just in first class, you'll find people working away on laptops and smartphones. Not only can I work, but I do it in comfort and I'm not disturbed by phone calls. So I'm actually more productive here than sometimes I'm in my office. But will getting to the office half an hour faster mean a big boost to productivity? I actually really don't think it will make any difference at all. I'm not sure it's money well spent because um, I work sort of two, three days a week in Birmingham. Um, and, I mean, we've, we use the internet to, and sort of conference calls and things anyway. So really, I mean, we, we're living in a much more technological age. I don't really see that it's... I think it'd be good to invest maybe more in kind of better Wi-Fi for more people. At speeds of 225 miles an hour or more, the HS2 project promises to transform rail travel. It's in two stages. First, the line from London to Birmingham to be completed by around 2026 at a cost of something like £17 billion. That will cut the time of the fastest journey from an hour and 24 minutes to 49 minutes and there'll be a knock-on effect for some trains heading further afield. But the real-time savings in the north of England come with the next phase to be completed in the mid-2030s, pushing the total bill up to around £32 billion. That would reduce the journey time to Manchester by 55 minutes to just an hour and 13 minutes, while an hour will come off a trip to Leeds, putting that city just an hour and 20 minutes from London. There's now ferocious opposition to the plans, much of it from people living along the route. The opponents say they prefer investment in the existing network, where passengers would see benefits much sooner. HS2, they claim, just doesn't make economic sense. The business case is deeply flawed. I'm a, I'm a business person. I've been through many business cases and produced them. Uh, the problem is that the costs exceed the benefits. There is a perception that it will help the North, when actually the benefits, uh, all the economists agree that they'll benefit primarily in London. Most of the jobs that will be created are in London. So that's erroneous, but that sounds good. And also this is, a, you know, this is an exciting, sexy, pointy-nosed project at a time of austerity, maybe a bit like... Concord, you know, can we afford to spend more than £1,000 per household on a scheme that doesn't deal with something that's particularly important, it's not top of the priority list, and it does it in the most expensive possible way with a completely new line? Business supporters of high-speed rail say the economy will suffer, particularly in the north, if the network isn't built, and it isn't just about speed. The key argument for high-speed rail is tackling the capacity constraints. I haven't seen a better way to tackle the chronic capacity constraints that we're going to face in Britain's rail network in a decade time. The West Coast Main Line is going to be full in 78 years. The East Coast Main Line full between 10 and 12 years. This is the best way to tackle the capacity. The time savings are like the icing on the cake. What the time savings do is bring additional economic and regeneration benefits.
Whether you think spending billions on high-speed rail is a good idea depends partly on how you see our working lives changing in the next two decades. Is Britain going to become a country where Japanese-style bullet trains speed us to meetings hundreds of miles away in an hour or so? Or does the future look more like this? Matt Miller runs a software business from his home in Oxfordshire, just a few miles from the proposed route of the high-speed line. So, so Jane hasn't met Vinny physically. Mm. I think everybody else has been in the same room, but not necessarily at sort of the same, same time. He and four colleagues spread across south-east England, meet online rather than by hopping onto a train. Where would you guys like money spent on, on high-speed rail or high-speed broadband? My vote's for high-speed broadband. I think that's the more effective way of um, bringing people together in the future. Yeah. I'd like high-speed broadband on trains. <laughs> <laughs> this is it's the office of the future. For one huge train enthusiast, the idea that fast broadband might replace fast trains is preposterous. The music producer Pete Waterman commutes to London from Warrington three times a week. Broadband doesn't employ people. All that broadband does is make the telecommunication companies richer. What do we want to do? Do we want to employ people and distribute the wealth and bring more people into the you know, into the, into the working ethic? Or do we want to just put everybody playing games all day long? Yes, but what about the mounting evidence that the business case for HS2 just doesn't add up? No railway numbers add up. And that's where this argument all falls down. This is, you know, this is the dream. Build it and they will come. You cannot analyse railways. You've never been able to. Since they built the first railways, everybody then has been doing figures. Well, if you're going to do figures, don't build your railway. So you can sit down there and you can make 50 arguments for, you can make 50 arguments against. What they never do is look at history and say, every time we built a new railway, the country has changed for the better. Come on, come on to... My trip to London is almost over. 80 minutes of wasted time or productive work. Take your pick. The truth is, the case for HS2 is full of so many variables, it's impossible to say today whether two decades from now it will prove worthwhile. So, politics, not economics, could decide where this journey ends. <laughs>